I believe selfishness can save the planet. The first reaction of people when we talk about selfishness is a negative one. Well, of course, it's, it's logical. We have been raised as kids. Listening, don't be selfish. When we use the expression selfishness with our colleagues, our teenager kids, our husbands or wives, it can go really, really bad. But what if we start looking at selfishness in a different way? What if we look at selfishness as self-interest? We need selfishness to survive. Let me put it this way. We need to take care of ourselves first in order to continue. We need the energy, the resources, the love to be able to give, to be generous, or to be altruistic, or not. So let's harness the power of selfishness to save the planet. Things are not looking good, but what does it have to do with me, with you? Probably everything, or probably nothing. But this, again, is the hottest here on Earth. And we listen, and we have been listening to messages sent to us, about us, with us, about the need to create, to consume, to buy differently. To buy differently so we can save the planet. The problem is we don't have time to evangelize people to do things differently. Why should they? We don't have time to convince people into doing things out of the benefit or generosity or the good for others. So what does it mean in terms of how we buy? What do we do? What do we believe on? We are hardwired to be selfish. Selfish is part of who we are. Selfish is part of our nature. How we buy, what we buy, how we consume, how we vote. Selfishness is relevant to each one of us, to each of the things we do, and to each of the things we believe on. This brings nicely into what does selfishness has to do with money? What does selfishness has to do with planet? We have this fantastic opportunity with great examples I'm going to share with you to demonstrate how one unsustainable dollar or pound can be turned into one sustainable dollar or pound out of pure selfishness. Let me show you some examples. I have brilliant examples, but I have just time for three examples today. Food. We all like food. Some of us like hamburgers, I guess, and some of us are crazy about hamburgers. This company called Impossible Foods is doing what they call impossible. And what they're trying to do is, as they say, provide us with insanely good hamburgers with insanely good ingredients. So we don't need to do trade-offs and stop being hunger for beef to save the planet. Giving you some statistics, they claim their burgers use 95% less land, 74% less water, and 87%, they, they create 87% at greenhouse gas emissions. So we don't need to trade off on our hunger for meat to save the planet. This sounds like a, like a great option for us to take on. My next example is Patagonia. You might have heard of Patagonia. Actually, I love shopping, as I do love eating as well. But all of us can make a decision on what we want to buy for how long we want to buy. And we don't need to go back to the shopping mall or to the shopping line because we have to go back and buy something that was worthless. We want to buy something that we want to keep and enjoy as much as we want to. Patagonia, great company doing outdoor clothing, created for some of us crazy or fantastic advert, and they launched this in Black Friday. Don't buy this jacket. What they were trying to say is, we produce jackets or clothing that are good enough, good for the planet, good for the people to enjoy them as, well, as much as they want to. So there is an option when we can do the things we like, go and shop, wear our clothes as much as we want to, or return them or trade them off for something else in their stores out of pure selfishness. Our third example, water blade. This is a brilliant innovator I have the privilege to support in one of our programs. They create these small devices you can see on screen 
which actually consume only 25% of the water of normal taps. So they claim that they can uh, repay this back out of the savings, water savings, in three months. Imagine if the Scottish government, with all these buildings they have, install and buy each tab in each building, in every floor. And then the universities as well follow. And what if the households do too? We can save millions and millions of liters of water. We can save millions and millions of money, pounds or dollars. This is what we call the power of selfishness at scale. So, bridging into money, let me talk about procurement. I know, it can sound like a very interesting or sexy topic to talk about, but clearly procurement is just nothing but the power of buying at scale. It's a very interesting topic, and actually I'm a big fan of it. Governments around the world buy stuff. They buy a lot of stuff, including, to just put in perspective, a lot of toilet paper. So what does it mean when companies or governments around the world decide to spend their money in? Procurement is power. Power, whether we want to call it like that or not, to leverage the good selfishness into something positive with positive impact or not. We talked about the one unsustainable dollar or pound to one unsustainable dollar or pound. Procurement is where these decisions to do one or the other happen. So let's harness our power of selfishness to make changes at scale to create impact at the pace we need it. We talked about the things we like, the things we love, and how we harness the power of selfishness. Let me tell you my story of selfishness. That is what got me here. I'm Colombian and proud. I have been traveling around the world and I was very fortunate that I could do this with my work. I wanted to learn. I wanted to explore, I wanted to meet different people, I wanted to understand different cultures, I wanted my family to do it like that as well. I went to banking, I left banking, and I found a great partner, Kate, to create together and build together a company that we call Project X. We did that because we wanted to live, and we want to live in a world we enjoy living in. Because we believe that if we harness the power of selfishness at a multi-stakeholder level, we can make a difference. How do we do that? I think for us, it comes back to basic selfishness. We help buyers, big buyers, to buy what is good for them, buy what is good for them and the people by what is good for them and the people and the planet. We are not asking buyers to buy things they don't need. We are not asking buyers to buy things that are only good for people or only good for the planet. We are doing this change that helps us to transition, hopefully, 10 industry value chains in the next 10 years. In numbers, this is about $1.3 trillion or pounds equivalent by 2030, by leveraging the selfishness of the buyers, the big buyers, leveraging the selfishness of the innovators with the great ideas, leveraging the selfishness of the investors or development organizations with the money, we can harness the power of selfishness to make a difference. So I hope you, you start believing like me that harnessing the power of selfishness can help us to save the planet. That actually, the way we buy, how we buy, how we vote, how we do business, and how we interact with each other can help us to make change at the pace the planet needs it. I strongly believe that if people do not get what they want, change will not happen fast enough. So it's time for us to harness the power of selfishness to make a change faster. So I strongly, absolutely believe that selfishness can help us to save the planet. And I'm selfishly asking each one of you 
each one of us to think selfishly long-term, but selfishly short-term. So it's about asking our governments, our organizations, the people that decide on budgets, the people that guide us into policy, into purchasing, to be sure short-term selfish and long-term selfish. There's a lot of people in this room today that I'm interested on, personally, hear your selfishness. Plenty of brilliant innovators with great ideas we could harness to help transition global value chains on ideas on feed, ideas on cooling, ideas on water. I would like to hear from you. Here in this room, we have a lot of buyers, potentially, that we can learn from and how we can help them to transition to buy what is good for them, what makes sense economically for them, but also good, and also good correcting, also good for people, also good for planet. There's a lot of expertise here in the room. I heard early fantastic speakers with a lot of knowledge. I want the selfish knowledge for us to learn from, to do something with this. So the big ask is harness your self-interest. Do something with your self-interest in how you buy, what you buy, how you consume, how you vote. It does matter. And let me close with my declaration of self-interest. I want to live in a world where I'm happy and enjoy living it. I want to have time freedom. I want to have location freedom. And I want to have money freedom to be able to do something, something I love. What is your declaration of self-interest? Thank you very much.